Hello YouTube, it is Everything Epan here, back again with another video tutorial. Today, we're going to be doing a tutorial on how to install Windows Whistler Build 2276 in VirtualBox. Now this is part of the technical beta of Windows Whistler, and it's towards kind of the end because it ranges from builds 2250 to 2287. So, without further ado, we're just going to get straight into the tutorial here, and there's going to be some links in the description. There's going to be four links. Uh, one for VirtualBox. Uh, the second one will be WinWare. The third one will be the MS DOS. Um, or not MS DOS. The first one would actually be a video tutorial for MS DOS, uh, how to install it in VirtualBox, because it does require that you have to install it um, for this to work. And you do need to install the CD ROM driver as well. Um, but for the sake of it, I will show you in this video. Um, but you will need to go back to that video. If you do not have the MS-DOS floppies, you'll need to go to the MS-DOS 6.22 tutorial to get those. So I'll have that linked in the description. And what we're going to do here is uh, go ahead and create a new virtual machine. And we're going to call this Windows, uh, if I can spell, Whistler Build 2276. Change your version here to Windows XP 32-bit and click Next. Um, you can leave this at 192 megabytes or you can bump it up a little bit if you would like. I'm just going to bump it up to 512 megabytes and click Next. And then we're going to create a virtual hard disk. Click Next twice on those screens and then uh, create the 10 gigabyte uh, drive. So click Settings here after you've done that and go to Storage. And what you need to do is click this button right here and click Add Floppy Controller because these are floppies and you're going to need to browse for the uh, floppies and insert disk number one and we'll click OK and then click start and it's going to start up your machine and then what we're going to do is during the setup here it's going to ask you um, to change the bio state or not ask you, but it will give you the option to change the date. And you do need to do this in order for this to work. So you're going to arrow up to the date and time and click enter. And then you're going to go ahead and enter the following date. So just type in 09 backslash 29 backslash 00. And I'll have this put in the description in case you can't see this for some reason. But again, it is 09 backslash 29 backslash 00. So click enter to save that and enter it another time and then go ahead and click enter and continue on with the DOS setup. Now if you want to see a little bit of a slower uh, tutorial for this, of course it is linked in the description, but I'm just going to go through this really quick here for you guys. And uh, now what we're going to do is insert the CD-ROM and click enter twice. Now it will come up with this, so don't worry about that. And then we're going to go ahead and install the CD-ROM driver. We're going to remove the floppy and then reset the machine and then now what you need to do is after installing MS-DOS and the CD-ROM driver you're going to need to insert the 2276 Whistler ISO and then what you need to do is you need to locate to the D drive and then click enter or whatever this drive letter that says right here if you see this drive D if the letter's different, do that letter. Like if it's drive R, do R. If it's drive like E or F, do the respective letter. But for me, it's D. And then type in dir. And there should be one that is I386 right here. So what you want to do is do CD I386. Click enter and it should get you into the I386 directory. And what you need to type in now for this next command is win NT all one word and click enter and it's going to ask where the files are located click uh, it should be defaulted to that click enter and now it's going to copy the files to your hard disk and it's going to continue to copy the files over so this process can take about a minute or two to complete so just let this uh, run and it'll eventually complete and then it will come up to the restart point so um, just let this sit for a little bit and I'll be back with you guys once we hit our first restart point Okay, so now it'll say that the MS-DOS based portion of setup is complete. So if it says if there's a floppy disk and drive, I don't remove it, but don't worry about that. Click enter to reboot. And of course, it's going to come up with an error that says cannot boot from the CD. So just go ahead and click enter to do the Windows Whistler installation. 
and um, the reason why we had to do it this way is because it uh, results in that B sod or error when you try to boot from the CD or DVD directly. So that's why we had to do it through MS DOS. So now it should come up with a setup notification. So go ahead and click enter to continue on that and click enter to set up Windows Whistler. It's going to come up with the license agreement. Go ahead and click F8 to agree. And then go ahead and go down to this unpartitioned space and click enter to install on that. And now we're going to format that partition with the NTFS file system quick. Click enter on that. And it's going to now format that partition of your virtual drive. And then it's going to like, do a examination. And then now it's going to copy files over once more. And that process will not take long whatsoever. It should take about 30 seconds to complete. Not even, actually. Maybe about 15 to 20 seconds to complete. And then it's going to ask you to reboot once more. So click enter to reboot. It's going to reboot the virtual machine. And it'll again say cannot boot from the CD. Just ignore that. And it's automatically going to boot up into the Whistler setup. And you can see the boot screen there. Um, and now it's going to get into the GUI interface part of the setup here. And eventually... After it loads up, after a little bit, it's going to pop up with the window here to begin the installation. So it takes just a little bit for it to pop up here. So here is that window. So just click next on it and it will bring up another window after a little bit after installing devices it's going to do that first and when it does that sometimes the mouse may freeze um, I'll show you if it happens uh, if it freezes I'll show you what to do to fix that but it's going to do the installing devices first so we let that go through and it'll pop up with another window that will ask I believe for your language and keyboard layout, if I'm not mistaken. And I don't want to pause this because it's almost finished. And so just give it a little bit and then it will pop with that window. And if your cursor is not moving, all you got to do is go up to input and turn off mouse integration and then you can click inside the window and your mouse will begin to move again and to get out of uh, the Whistler window just hit the right control key and you're back on your main machine so go back in here and click next after selecting your language and keyboard layout it's going to ask you to type in a name so I'm just going to type in everything epan click next and then you can name your computer whatever you want I'm just going to name it Whistler 2276 and then click next and then leave the date and time as it is and choose your respective time zone and click next and then it's going to continue with the installation and flash up with a network installation window and now it's going to begin with copying the files and doing some other parts of the installation so just let this part go for a little bit it should take a couple minutes to complete um, so just let it sit for a little bit and I'll be back with you guys once we hit our next restart point so it's going to restart automatically the second time and it's again going to come up with another error and then when it's in this just click enter to do a Windows Whistler and then it will uh, eventually just boot up into the logon screen and it's automatically going to log you in to Windows Whistler 2276 so you've now successfully installed that in VirtualBox so if you get to this screen that is good so Thank you guys for watching this tutorial. If you like this tutorial, please make sure to leave a like on the video if it worked for you. Um, leave some comments down below if you're having any issues I can try and help fix or if you have any requests for future videos that I can try and accomplish for you. And uh, do not hit for, forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Once again, thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.